but uh, the majority of you are already students of IAC, so you know, you know us already, you are already part of that. So I'm going to speak more about uh, some projects which are related, uh, apart from the, uh, which are related to the public space. Just a brief introduction for the external students. So IAC is a research, education and digital fabrication and promotion center in Barcelona. And uh, our focus is uh, understanding and designing the way how we will inhabit uh, in the future. So what is the future hab habitat of our, our society? How do we interact in the future in the built environment? How can we shape it today? So this question becomes uh, very relevant at the moment in which we, we talk about the uh, advanced uh, architecture. So about technology, how can digital technology really change the way how we design? So this is very well known from the students of IAC already. Um, there is a general agenda. There is the agenda of self-sufficiency. So empowering the people uh, to being actor and agent of transformation of our society towards a more sustainable context. But today, as I was saying, I would like to speak very briefly about projects that are related to the topic of public space. If we have to design the future of our society, we must talk, speak about the public space. Why? The public space is uh, absolutely the soul of the city. In the city of Barcelona, this is pretty clear. This is the place where the society represents itself. This is the place where the society and the different people of the uh, citizens can interact. So how do we design that in the moment in which we can deal with digital technologies? And that's the main question of many projects that are dealing with these three main topics. So cohabitation and public space activation, sometimes also some of the projects also co-design, you will see. Gamification and playful interaction. So how to use game logic, game mechanics, an interaction that is, not, that is also based on uh, play and uh, uh, playful engagement and also how to use advanced and interactive technologies. This is, of course, the, the, the strong focus also by a company. So in the project that I'm going to show you, you are going to see them. First of all, the projects related to the super block. Probably some of, the, uh, uh, some of you already know these projects. Uh, uh, Matilde Marengo, the head of studies, also explained a bit about some of them already. Uh, Superblock, it's an area in, here in Barcelona in which uh, uh, an, an enormous amount of public space has been created, closing the streets to the cars, so almost two hectares. The Superblock works on this kind of model for the city of Barcelona, dividing, uh, uh, working on matrices that are based on nine by nine and creating new public space in the middle, as you can see. But this brought to a question, how do we design for that public space? I was really interested, of course, into this project. Also, the, the super block, it's uh, three blocks away from here. And I don't know if any of you already went to see it or just passed by, no? You will, I mean, you were all the time in the previous row. <laughs> okay, so um, the first project is called Poble Joc, and it's an interactive installation that is working as an urban game with the objective of working with the citizen engagement. So here, I always keep the three topics and you can see how all of them are almost present every time. So how did it work? In the public space, we created digital fabricated uh, devices and furniture that were distributed in the space that the people could move inside the public space and each one was representing a function, was actually a function. So we had uh, ping pong tables, we had plants uh, and uh, urban uh, uh, orts. Uh, we had also different benches and many, many functions, a public, uh, sharing market, etc. So citizens had the possibility to displace all these objects uh, in, the in the space, creating a productive public space, but creating also an adaptive public space. What was really interesting in this project was that, was that the citizens were able to do actually a place making action. I will also explain what is this later on. So really explain and communicate their desires by actually transforming the space, okay? So when they were cohabit cohabiting in the space, they were activating the space, but they were doing that through a, an interaction that was playful, but also with advanced technologies. These also are the technologies. With QR code and, a and augmented reality, we were giving information on the impact on certain decisions to the citizens, allowing them to make decisions that were really aware in terms of objective. And then again, data, in this case, drones that were able to uh, visualize and uh, generate information on where all these uh, objects were located by the different actors. So storing and collecting data in order to be able to work with that. 
again, the, these three topics are present also in another project that uh, Mathilde also in the, in the for the IX students are really introduced. I will go a little deeper into this. This is the project of Super Barrio. Super Barrio is again working with the topics of cohabitation and co-design with the topic of the interactive technologies and with the topic of uh, playful in interaction and gamification. It's a, a urban, plat urban design platform working with gamification tools. It's like a game and it's working as an open source tool. So basically uh, the project, is, uh, the, the, the platform is showing the super block and uh, the citizens have the possibility to display, as in public job, different objects in the city, in the public space, okay? Different functions, they belong to culture, ecology, energy and mobility category. Okay, and uh, to each action uh, derived uh, a series of consequences. So first of all, score, first of all, score the points. Uh, the players were actually uh, capable to, the objective and the challenge in this case was to keep a balance between the different levels. Why? Why do you think this was one of the targets? So it's not to put the maximum of, of, uh, of elements, it's just to keep the balance. The reason is that we believe, and we just believe and believe, that what is important is to create a balanced public space, that it's capable to show and represent and offer a, need, the, a solution to the needs of all the society, all the components of the society. The workers, people who inhabit in the city, in this area, children, elderly people, students, etc. The players were awarded, there is an award in this case, when the, balance, when the project is complete. It was possible to download it, we played in the street, we were collecting data. At the same time, this project was able to uh, be, was a pilot project. We brought it to, to Favara in Sicily, to Genova in Italy, to Porto, Nantes and Sofia. In these three, the framework of another European project. So, one second, I will just admit one of your colleagues. Okay, so this is another project, it is called Abla. This project was again working with the public space, in this case working with the augmented reality. The citizens were able to show and leave uh, different uh, uh, text, as in this case, or emoticons, as in this case, with which they were able to give their feedback in the configuration of the public space. So if they liked a, a solution, if they didn't, if they felt that a certain area was unsafe, etc. All this was um. also, Sorry. Marco, please, can you share a screen? Uh, I can, we can't see what you're presenting. If you're presenting anything. Uh, Wait, I will share. You are not I'm sorry. To... No. Sorry, Ira. No? No. Well, I will no. share it again. Were the other people able to see the screen? Yeah? Yes. Okay. So, Rana, maybe it's a config yes. problem of configuration of your computer. Is it? No. Bad? Yes. No, it's okay. Thank okay. you. Well, thank you okay so in terms of data again how what why was that important uh, why was that related to co-design we were engaging the citizens through this kind of playful interaction based on technology but we were also asking to them to give feedback no and this feedback was then collected in terms of data in terms of words that were used or in terms of emoticons and this data was geolocated okay so you can see here for in terms of uh, time frame different time frames also, what was, uh, uh, this is a, a, a simulation obviously, of possible feedback that the citizens could give, okay? Understanding that in certain area, there is a certain situation in, all, in others might be needed to make, take other actions. Again, this information also can be also overlapped with more data coming from the city council, and then we can create area and we can read patterns, we can develop different actions. Another project that was working with uh, game, in this case it was really a game, it was called Super Lupa. Lupa is in, uh, is in Spanish the, um, the glass that you can, I don't remember how do you say it in English, but you can see the icon. And the objective was uh, to foster the citizens' interaction in the street. It was an, an exploration game. We were asking the, the, citizen, the, the citizens, in this case, young citizens, to explore the space and learn while exploring the space. So different objects were left as uh, traces in the space. And then uh, with uh, augmented reality, the, city, the, the children were able to visualize different information. So they had to find different spots 
in the in the public space and every time it was a learning process for instance in this case they were learning how from a plant it was able a plant is able also to produce food and if we produce food in the city also this is going to create a better environment okay so that's uh, that's uh, the project basically and uh, this again is working with uh, these three topics that I was talking about and you will see how important are they for this workshop of today as well. Cohabitation, public space activation, co-design, gamification, playful interaction and advanced interactive technology. Now I'm going to speak uh, about the Hume project. Did, uh, uh, did you hear about Hume before? Yeah, beside the presentation of uh, the head of studies, Matilde? Okay, so the Festival of Light of Barcelona, it's happening every year in February, and that's a, it's a very important festival in which different uh, schools, but also different uh, artists are invited to make installation in the public space that can activate courtyards, abandoned lots, in order to create uh, interaction between the, the citizens and the space, to let the citizens discover unused public space, and to that, this interaction is done through a playful interaction, and also through advanced technologies, of course, light, video mapping, laser, etc. These projects that developed by IAC, uh, I would like to go to, through them uh, to show a bit how we were working with that. This is the first one, Luminescent Terrain. It was in an old courtyard, in a very ancient courtyard in the city center, close to the cathedral. And the interaction was based on uh, adding different L LED devices, you can see in which the, the citizens were capable to control the movement of the light and this rain, this luminescent rain, with their voice. So you can see that the, the, the citizens are discovering the space, are inhabiting the space in a different way, are interacting the one with the other. The person that is speaking at the microphone is taking a role in the middle of the, of the, of the space itself. And these, of course, can, re can create a process of better awareness of the spaces that were before abandoned, for instance. There is not co-design in this case. There is activation. Another project is called Curious Light, is working in a similar way. Another courtyard, in this case, we were working with the three-dimensional configuration of the space with this light uh, that was uh, uh, suspended through different cables and was moving throughout the um, throughout the, 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 the volume. <laughs> interact with other citizens, which is something that it's always very difficult. This is, of course, a power related to uh, inter interactive technologies, but also playful interaction. This is another one. Again, light, of course, sound, in this case, another ancient courtyard um, in which we displaced these, uh, these different objects, these benches, that were connected by these cables. These cables were working as an arc. So the citizens were moving inside the space, discovering the space, and uh, basically making music out of that. So they were, okay. So they were moving the, the all the chords, creating this, uh, this 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 sound and interacting in the space itself. These are courtyards that were completely unused. They were open. No one was going there. No activity. The amount of people that arrived in this uh, specific event to this uh, uh, place is really enormous. And another project, uh, again, also uh, developed all these projects. Uh, in all these projects, the most recent one, actually, Christian had a very important role. So, also, you will uh, know him better later. You will, some of you also will work with him in the Mastering Advanced Architecture. So, this is work called in Bos Nocturne, so night forest. This project was working with LED bars that were again performed and working with sound. So in an abandoned lot that was completely closed here by in the Poblino, as you can see here, we were able, oh, but now the light is a problem, okay. 
we were able to create this kind of interaction between the citizens in the external world. You can see that the people were streaming there. And what was really interesting, apart from the beauty, of course, of the project itself, is that it created an attraction, an incredible attraction of different citizens that started to, to watch and to look at this uh, lot, previously abandoned and currently abandoned, actually, and uh, started to visualize that, interact through that, and talk about that. These topics are always present. In this case, there was not co-design. So um, with this, I'm done. I, I will continue later with the brief presentation uh, and uh, presentation of the challenges of the workshop. But just uh, I can anticipate that these three topics are going to be present even later on. I will now give the word to uh, uh, Davide and Zan. But if you have any questions, of course, we'll be more than happy to answer. The different? The different projects that we do there or support by kind of static one. So in the case of Super Barrio, it was that, that's a good question. It was uh, the project of Super Barrio was developed in the same moment in which they cl had closed the streets. So this public space was completely empty and it was in the need of uh, a proposal. Okay, so that was, we were not asking a feedback because there was nothing to give a feedback about but we simply asked the, the people to express their desire for this new space that was completely empty. And uh, Super Barrio is not, uh, at the moment, offering the possibility to give feedback on existing projects, on existing situations. No, but I mean the other one. The other one with the phone. Ah, okay, Abla. Yeah, Abla. Okay, sorry. Do you want Abla? So, the feedback that they gave about everything. Okay. The citizens had the possibility to leave an emoticon or text about whatever they wanted. So from the street to the north, to the, to the, you can see here, for instance, the, the bike sharing that were empty, just to give you an idea. Bike sharing station are empty, which is a big problem in Barcelona. The, the, the cross um, section of the street is really noisy. There are no benches. I love the playground. I would like to have here a certain space. It was totally free. Yeah. And also they had the possibility to see the other people proposals, which is also the very important aspect. I'm not alone. I will realize that other people have different needs in the city, if I'm able also to see them, to discover them. Many times we go around and we also, of course, about the public space, we have a, a, an opinion, a feedback, and a, a, an idea that all, it's only related to our needs. But as citizens, we need to interact and understand with other citizens, understand their needs. This is what is a community. So how can we let the community grow? And how can we let the community interact and really be aware as a citizen, how can I be aware of the other people's needs? I might love to have a disco in the, in the street. The guy that is working in the, um, in the early morning, probably not, just to give a silly example. Okay, guys, I will give the word to uh, Hello. Or Davide. Hello. Hello, Susan. Uh, uh, how are you? Uh, I've got a question. Um, I mean, a logistic question. Uh, since I have uh, both experience in uh, you know iOS apps and installations, um, it takes some time uh, to implement these projects. Uh, how much? If if you want to, uh, if you have an idea and to want to implement it in this area, both installations or uh, a mobile application for AI systems or based on architectures or based on public spaces and things like this. Um, how is going to be, I mean, what, what are the logistics? I mean, how much time do we have and uh, how, how do we gonna implement it? I mean, because for installations as I have experienced, for example, if you show an installation to people, 
you should be always caring about that. For example, in one of my experience, uh, I had an installation for one week. So every day from morning to the night, I was caring about that installations and how, how does it, you know, working some motors, you know, dysfunctioning at the middle of the way or for the mobile application, it's, it's a matter of the certificates. For example, you send it to the Apple store, or Google store, you need to send it for the test flights. And this, this takes time. So for example, an application, it takes, for example, three weeks to be confirmed by the app stores or Google store. So uh, how do we work on this logistics? I mean, how much time we, we have and what are, what are the, some opportunities that uh, we can uh, implement this project uh, in the reality? I'm wearing the mask again, otherwise it's impossible. So Sasan, I couldn't hear you from here very, very well, but uh, tell me if I understood well. I mean, you refer to the workshop or to Ria of these three days, because this I will explain later, or you refer in general to how can we deal with this topic of uh, the cost of any and the implementation uh, of an installation in the real yeah, space? Both, both. I mean, uh, okay. could, we, could we extend this more than the workshop and make it a real project and receive funding from, for that so we can work yeah, yeah. on it? We will go in detail into that later on, so okay. after in the, in the brief presentation. But in general, uh, what is, uh, you're touching a point that is very important. So how can we make these projects reality and also how can what is the cost to implement them and uh, also the relation between a project and uh, the time so the time and the, and the level of uh, complexity of a project in relation to the time very complex projects related to complex technologies might work only for an event while the very simple ones can work for a longer time and this is an important uh, aspect we will see this le better later Thank you. Thanks to you. Mm -hmm.